Welcome back to the Air Crown Crypto channel. Wishing you a happy and healthy start to this nice Sunday. Uh, not sunny. Actually, not sunny morning over here from Dubai. Still got a few days left. Uh, actually, almost a week left. <laughs> With that in mind, I do want to focus today's video on a little bit more of the longer term analysis on this Bitcoin asset. So what the key triggering areas are that would really dictate the next few months to come and really set in and solidify these biases that we've been looking for within these next few weeks of, uh, of February, that is. So with that in mind, I want to make sure that I have my notes present over here. I'm not going to do the usual Sunday analysis where I go like super, super, super in-depth in macro, but I want to go over things that are more relevant towards the next couple of weeks of price action because there are a few things that could actually even happen today. And if they do happen, that would make me feel a lot more confident in uh, one scenario over the other. So with that in mind, I want to wish you the best, best, and the haps, happiest. Let's get into it right now. We're actually not going to start off again on the crown trading application today. What I can let you know, though, if you are interested in the premium features, they are actually live now. You can just check the learn more section right in over here, and that will aware you of what to expect uh, with it. So with that in mind, I just want to, whoa, Jesus Christ, man, someone is slamming their door. I don't know if you can actually hear that in the background. I'm just making sure that I'm recording right now as well. So there we go. Okay, notes back up on my other screen. Yes, I do have two screens even whilst traveling. And let's go into the pricing charts right here. So I want to first represent uh, both a short term uh, time frame bullish case and the bearish case and where the key triggers are going to be sort of met from that. And first, let's follow up on the last uh, about 72 hours of the last few days. <laughs> let's follow up in the last few days on the analysis, essentially. So in the last few days, we were essentially looking for a pullback from the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement on the macro range. That is not this area right here. That is, in fact, this area right here, which we did hit the 0.5, just above 43,000, or sorry, $45,300. And that did produce our first major pullback of which we did say a real uh, sorry the first target would be about 41,500 and perhaps a little bit lower if things do allow for that over the weekend especially you know somewhere down around about low $40,000 territory it looks like we've gotten that in the overnight session right here uh, as you can see the old LARP lines doing their job which is just weird but fair enough uh, ultimately I want to be very directly clear with anyone who might be new to this channel who doesn't already know this when I draw these stupid red lines right here it's not to mean like price action is literally going to do exactly that that. It's just kind of like a general guide of, hey, what would this situation look like if this, you know, if this criteria was validated, for example. So in this case, you know, this one did get validated, or this was just kind of our main look on this one. You know, hitting a major area like that, you're very likely going to pull back for just people taking profits uh, by the simple nature of it. But in this case right here, you know, we got down to what 41,630 in the overnight session. I'd say that's close enough to the 41,500-ish region. So this, if you are in the short-term time frames bullish, well, that would constitute uh, probably what you're looking for actually that would essentially constitute that pullback so do i think that there's a threat of a move a little bit lower yes we can follow up on that later and what that essentially look like but i do start to see some signals of uh, of short-term reaccumulation right here so that would be good for the blue loss but it is still very 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 far away from well i wouldn't actually say it's very far away but it's uh it's, it's a little bit further away from getting actually confirmed so what would actually confirm this and how does this relate into the higher term time frames and how can we see this domino of effect uh really lead things onwards and upwards for you know a nice major move in this case well, in this case, we do have, of course, a very short-term time frame range right here, this being the hourly. I'm actually going to work off of the bit Mexican chart right here because I want a fresh run right now. And let's see. Okay, just want to make sure that I get this right. Yeah. Okay, so in this case right here, we did see a little bit of a spike up to about $43,000 yesterday. That was just, yet again, another lower high. And, of course, we already have our low side of this range, that being your basically, I'd say, about 41, 41,700-ish uh, region, 41,500-ish region, whatever you want to call it. It's basically the same thing in this case. Anyways, right now we are quite literally within the midst of, or sorry, not the midst of, the, but the middle of this range. Why is this important? Well, because when you're in the middle of a range, it doesn't really mean much, but a range resolution in this case would be had with any sort of an hourly closure above yesterday's wick high at $43,000. Why is this important? Because of several things. Well, one, we would have a natural target based off of a bearish tracement, actually, in this case, between the high of our rally and the low, uh, or the presumed low in this case, which would be right uh, somewhere between about 40 
43,800 to 44,200 ish region. And I'm just going to draw a nice little blue box right here. It's kind of like a targeted region. And, you know, basically around this last little swing high that we saw on the 11th of February right here. There are a few things supporting this as more likely actually in the short term. And I do think it actually is a little more likely in the short term. Again, I need to see a validation above this region. But personally speaking, yeah, I do think it is more likely. And I do think it's realistic to say that we might have even seen the, you know, at least a short term low right here, maybe even a medium term time frame low. So let's go over and reference our stochastic momentum oscillators, uh, specifically on the lower term time frames, because it is lining up in a very specific way, which you can obviously judge for yourself. This is the four hour time frame, and the four hour time frame is seeing a turn to the upside from a very low level for the first time, um, you know, from the same level since basically uh, February 3rd, which let me remind you that was back on over here when we call that bear trap from about 36, 500 ish region to, you know, mid 40s essentially. And that will be continuing with upside momentum as long as Bitcoin is closing above 49, uh, sorry, not 49, 41,930, which Bitcoin is currently trading about uh, 500 bucks above as of this moment with um, only 39 minutes and uh, 22 seconds left to go. So, so far, so good. And that is consistent amongst pretty much all of the lower term time frames. If we go over here to the three hour, what do we see right here? We see it nice and upside momentum above 42,320. Again, we're just barely above that right now, but fair enough. Buy hourly is showing what is showing upside momentum above 41.950 and hourly is showing upside above about 42200 as well now that oh and i should also go over the six hour here too because the six hour is rather interesting and that will be remain with upside momentum as long as bitcoin is above forty two thousand dollars. so i do see that you know the lower term time frames are uh, technically not on the same side right now but they are very close to each other and starting to pivot around the same area that being just below forty two thousand dollars let's say on you know preferably like a four hour closure if that starts to happen especially even an hourly below about 41.7 i think it was or 41.6 whatever it was uh, then I would be looking for the downside obviously to happen first. That would initiate targets down first around like $41,000, which isn't you know too much of a move. But ultimately, I would be looking for the gap fill that we looked at on CME from not this past Friday, but the Friday before that closure, which is down in, right, in like the mid to low $40,000 territory. That would essentially be my uh, my scenario if that were to happen. But for right now, you know there are more things kind of lining up with that short term move uh, potentially to the upside upon that validation. The reason why I'm highlighting this is because there's actually something very significant uh, that can be confirmed if that does happen. So again, if Bitcoin does about validate about this region right here, but it's also the 200 simple on the four hour time, or, uh, sorry, on the hourly time frame as well, you know, targets up basically around $44,000 would be initiated. Why is this important? And what does this mean? As I reference my notes yet again, well, this would have major implications with the weekly time frame actually. And so what I'm going to show right now is I'm going to go over here to the weekly. And, uh, and you can see that Bitcoin does have that nice drive of hidden uh, hidden bullish evidence right here, whether you want to call it phantom or not, I don't, you know, it really doesn't matter uh, to me. However, um, you know, when you do see it within this kind of zone, usually these aren't like the best ones, but maybe good enough. Anyways, the reason why this is important is because not only would it, you know, uh, uh, insinuate that that is now playing out a little bit more, but if you look at the exponential moving average on the RSI right here, it would actually put it above that region. How do I know that? Because I have Caretaker's RSI and Caretaker's RSI is amazing because it can actually tell you the exact price that would be needed in order to cross above the EMA signal line. In this case, 44,200 or so, which is actually that 618 Fibonacci bearish retracement target if the shorter term timeframes do start to uh, validate above that region. You know, technically speaking, the, you know, the box is, is in a range there, but that would be, uh, you know, a relevant target as well, especially if Bitcoin closes the weekly today above that region. If that happens, that would look really, 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 really good for Bitcoin playing out over the next few weeks to the upside, as we would also very likely have the weekly jewel, uh, or in this case, I'm using the jewel light, but I'm going to switch over to using the regular jewel soon enough. Um, I was just using this one simply because, uh, well, you know, we were just offering it up on trading view and I figured it'd be easier for people to follow along. Anyways, uh, in this case, we'd probably see it, uh, you know, switch to some upside momentum here as well alongside volatility. Problem is when I look at BBWP, I think it's a little bit less likely because we still see a contraction uh, phase going on right here. I really want to see BB BBWP uh, have upside angle alongside a solid color on this. And right now we have basically trendless on both. Um, so it would still be a corrective move actually. And, and, and even though it would be a corrective move, I mean that, you know, within the context of like a macro weekly range, 
you know, that could be a, a rather big move. I mean, perhaps even all the way up to uh, $50,000 as we postulated before. What was that based off of? That was based off of, of course, the, um, I might as well do a new one over here. Uh, that was based off of, if I get rid of this, the macro range, high to low. In this case, I'm going to use the macro range. That being about 29500 to the downside versus about uh, $69,000 to the upside. You can see that the 618 is right around that $50,000 level. So uh, that's essentially around where I'd be looking for anywhere, you know, give or take like a thousand bucks on that range because ultimately you know it's a weekly so naturally it's gonna be a big margin of error like a thousand dollars uh it's relevant for it okay also what is at stake at the end of this market close today uh is the weekly stochastic as uh, so a weekly stochastic is gonna have a chance to cross the upside um and this is actually a very powerful signal right here for for a few reasons that i'm going to go over uh, as the advanced stochastic here ha actually has like a full-on strategy with it which i'll explain as best i can although Maybe we go to this one over here, yeah, because we, we want to see volatility on this one. Uh, but basically, we will see weekly stochastic momentum cross the upside for the first time in the same level since July, July bear trap, that is, way back on over here at 30,000 before going to basically 69, um, with any sort of a closure above 36,700. Not bad. On top of that, this dotted line here represents the ADX, which is another sort of volatility-like uh, indicator. And the ADX is already fully reset. And the signals from when an ADX fully resets are typically, especially when they're coming from a critical zone, whether it be to the upside or the downside, uh, are usually quite powerful. Um, let me give you an example. The last time we saw low ADX, <clears throat> Um, let me just see. Uh, the, yeah, the last time we saw low ADX with even just, uh, well, actually, let me find it. Yeah, this one. Oh, this <laughs> nice one. All right. Um, at the last time we found, you know, low ADX with low stochastic read, so low stochastic momentum crossing from the critical zone to the upside was basically back on over here, um, December 2018, actually, where we saw the ADX just briefly crawling up from, you know, essentially the low reads of it. And then weekly stochastic momentum finally uh, catching its uh, its breath right there as well. And that was essentially your last macro cycle low. It's not always going to be perfect, obviously. Um, we do have this iteration over here in January of 2020, very low ADX. And of course, sto weekly stochastic momentum coming in from the critical region. And where was that? That was essentially, uh, you know, a pretty big move, but it was ultimately, you know, a failed move into the flu dump of um, yeah, a couple of years ago in March, but still from the initiation of that signal at about 6,700 to the tie of that signal was about 52%. Uh, percent. So, you know, rather, I'd, I'd say that's pretty good, pretty damn good. Anyways, um, so I do think that that is worth mentioning. Uh, again, when I do look at AVP on this also representing volatility, you know, it's, I mean, yes, it is kind of expanding right here, but you can see that overall has been trending down for a while. So I do look at this as in a macro, uh, cor uh, not cor corrected, but contraction phase, um, which can go on for a little bit longer. So what does that essentially mean for the macro picture? I think at best, Bitcoin's, you know, going to continue to play at this range, um, basically between about, you know, uh, mid mid to upper 50s and mid $30,000 territory. That represents obviously the macro. I know someone's going to be like, that's not fucking helpful, Crown. It's $30,000. Well, yeah. Uh, it's called the macro, sir. So, macro. <laughs> if I ever want to test my patience, <laughs> no, no, I shouldn't even shouldn't even mention it. Um, also, there's a couple of other things that I do think round out the bullish case, and then we'll go, and then we'll move on into the bearish case. Um, but uh, but the last one is the three day chart over here on the secondary chart, which has multiple has three things going for it essentially: the MACD the PMAR and the three day white 20 simple moving average right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my drawing tool. Okay, there we go. And um, let's see, how do I want to postulate this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to reference all of the times first as the trigger where the three day MACD crosses to the upside. And then the second trigger is the price action actually getting above, closing above the white 20 symbol. And then three, I mean, two and three aren't really in order here, although they're both equally as important. I'd say the PMR is maybe a little bit more important in this case, uh, is when the PMAR gets above the moving average on this as well. This has had a really uh, interesting historical signature in the past few years here. So I think I already have this, yeah, marked off. All of these green horizontals, or uh, sorry, green verticals, they represent when three day, actually no, they represent when the PMAR gets above the moving average, but the three day MACD getting uh, crossing to the upside also seems to kind of correlate with that rather well. So let's just go through the last few examples and then we'll talk about the relevancy of it right now. 
Um, and again, this is, you know, this is how I actually do my trading strategies for the most part. It's like I go ahead and back test it. Now, obviously, I do a little bit more in depth than this, but, you know, you can kind of get some insight on that if, if it's not already like, you know, abundantly clear. Anyways, the last time we saw the three-day MACD just blindly cross the upside, just not, not even coming in from the same area, which we are from, you know, the summer lows, by the way. But uh, but that was October. In October, we saw the $40,000 low right here. Bitcoin then reclaims the 20 simple right there at about 40, uh, 46,726. And then you also see that the PMAR reclaims the moving average on this as well. And from, you know, from, from, from essentially that signal given right here, 44,000 bucks or so, uh, or just the mid 40, mid to low 40s, we do see a move, which I'm trying to measure out, but the damn thing's in my face, and it's about like 50% right there, maybe a little bit more. Let me just, uh, actually, I'm OCD about this, so I do want to 100% uh, check, but basically this move right here, yeah, 50 to 60% from basically, you know, low 40s to upper 60s, you know, a, a, a rather nice move if I say so myself. Um, then we have another iteration right here from the summer, right, where we do see, again, weekly, or it's not weekly, three-day MACD crossing to the upside, great. We see, of course, three-day uh, reclaim the white 20 temple great we see the three-day PMAR reclaim the moving image in this also great and that was your move from about you know 30,000 all the way up to 53,000 or so a 76% move you know, not not bad <laughs> um, we have another iteration over here where we do see actually we did not see the three-day MACD cross the upside it was already up but you know this one obviously already trained above the 20 simple and did reclaim the PMAR that's what I was uh, highlighting on this green vertical bar but even from that price point you know from this signal given right here to next high 33 percent. i mean not bad more of a continuation signal than anything this one was was a full-on signal however we do see three-day uh macd crossing the upside right here early february then we see of course price action already above the 20 simple and the pmar follows right here and or yeah, it's kind of hard to get, yeah, but you get, yeah, I mean, it's right there in early February. And that takes price action from basically this region right here to, I mean, pretty much your all-time highs. Shows another 70% move, which is actually rather similar to one of the more recent iterations that we uh, identified earlier. Um, the where was another iteration that we can highlight. Yes, this was a big one, actually. Very, very big one. Huge, you might even say. And that was October of 2020 right here. Uh, three day MACD cross the upside. Bitcoin reclaims the white 20 simple. That is at about $11,000. And also uh, at the same point, the PMAR as well. And off to the fucking races up to $20,000, which is an 85% move. So again, you know, a, a lot of these percentage moves do kind of have a rhyme uh, that they've been going through, except for certainly this one that we're about to go over. But you'll notice there's something missing from this signal. Three day MACD to the upside. Great. Price action reclaims the 20 simple. Great does not reclaim really on the uh, on the PMR. We have a little small small smidgen right there, but that's not really uh, constitutive of that, obviously. And uh, but even then, you know, even then from the signal given, which was right here, I'm gonna take it from one bar later uh, to the high of that run, you know, 29 and a half, 30 percent run, so not bad. Uh, but we didn't have all signals present. Same thing over here, you know, uh, we got the three day MACD signal across the upside right here. Bitcoin reclaims the 20 simple right here, you know, a few close later, about a week and a half later, or sorry, about two weeks later, and then obviously already reclaimed the PMAR. But uh, I'm going to take it from the three day MACD signals that's kind of like in the middle and the next move up 50% um, before next consolidation. And then same thing over here, same thing over here. This one actually did fail, however, as you can see. So I won't go over this one because, you know, it's already, we'll just measure it out right now because, well, why not? 60%. Hey, a lot of these have very similar moves, don't they? Um, but this one over here, complete failure, uh, to be fair. You know, again, three day MACD cross the upside. We even get the PMAR signal and reclaim the 20 simple on the same bar, basically. And that one never traded higher after that bar. So, or, well, I mean, over, you know, a long enough time period, obviously did, but, uh, but in this segment right here before making new lows, and that was a 35% day, but that's not a 35% signal right there because that signal was basically faded, like, from the signal given. So it was not, not a good one, obviously. Anyways, uh, my point is that it's not perfect as is nothing in trading. Otherwise, well, we'd all just follow that strategy and we'd all be rich as fuck. And that's just not the... That's just not it, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but ultimately, you know, I do think that uh, this kind of helps out the more uh, immediate law ish case. And this would imply that Bitcoin obviously doesn't come down below about $40,000, which is my line in the sand for, um, you know, kind of throwing away any sort of more immediately bullish scenario. I know a lot of people are looking for something like this. A lot of people are looking for like a move down to, let me just pull up another fresh chart right here, a move down to... Uh, Okay, first off, they're drawing like this bullshit, which, or sorry, this amazing analysis right here, which is like this. Uh, it's, it's the diagonal trend line of destiny. <laughs> it's like, okay. Um, 
but uh, but they're doing something like this where it's like we need to retest the diagonal and go down to like I don't know thirty nine thousand or thirty seven thousand or whatever. Or actually, thirty seven thousand actually could work, but um, but ultimately, it's, I, I think it's probably doing this wrong anyways. Something like this, I'm guessing. So keep on seeing like thirty nine thousand is what a lot of people are talking about. But uh, we're just gonna do this and, and and we're gonna make a head and shoulders right there. And maybe maybe that is what happens, possible. Um, but I think that's a lot less likely, especially when like a lot of people are kind of looking at the same thing. Uh, for me, if Bitcoin does start to close dailies below about forty thousand dollars, I do think that Bitcoin very likely retraces that bear trap that we saw early February, actually, all the way down to you know mid thirty thousand dollar territory. Here's the thing, though. So we're now gonna go over the bearish. Uh, scenarios here and of course it's up to you you know whichever one kind of makes more sense to you obviously um you know uh, you know obviously that's why i give validations and invalidations for these sort of scenarios um and for right now the bullish scenarios you know still pretty far away from or i guess it's just far away from being uh, uh what's it called um uh valid in this case anyways uh, so here's the thing, you know, we do have tomorrow being a bit of a wild card, right? We have the Fed emergency meeting, which is great. It's like they probably going to start to do like O faces too. You know, you see Jerome Powell going like, <laughs> which would be great. Um, emergency Fed meeting. We're not going to, we're going to think about raising rates, but we're not going to do it, but we'll think about it this time. Um, well, that'd be cool. Anyways, uh, <laughs> and then also, you know, you got the Super Bowl today, so uh, uh, cool. I actually saw a Fibbo Swanee analysis on that, which is pretty funny. I know he's just kind of like joking around with it, but it was rather interesting. So definitely check him out. Um, and then, uh, and then also, what was the other one? Uh, okay, so it was Fed. Yeah, and then also the Ukraine Russia stuff, which is very interesting because like the Ukraine Russia stuff, it seems like everyone, everyone, in, uh, like all heads of states of the world, but Ukraine and Russia are saying war is imminent war, it's like they're doing the fucking clickbait shit too they're like war is imminent it's definitely <laughs> it's like it's crazy man it's so fucking crazy um but fair enough you know may, maybe it is imminent i don't know i'm not a uh, political or like a war analyst i guess i i don't know i'm not an insider there and i imagine most people probably are not um but here's the thing uh, if Bitcoin, if Bitcoin does close below the bottom side of it, even our short-term time frame range here, which uh, we could just move up to like 40, 41.6, uh, 50 or so, um, or 41.7, let's just call it any sort of an hourly, hourly closure, closure below there. Yes, uh, Bitcoin very, 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 very likely does fulfill the gap that we did see on CME from two Fridays ago right here. Also, if you do chart this as a six hour time frame, we do have a little bit of a uh, bastardized version of a head and shoulders right there. And that does have a tentacle target down to about low $40,000 uh, dollar territory as well. So whether it's like 40,000 or 40,500, I don't have a strong opinion on, but that's kind of my line in the sand for Bitcoin. If Bitcoin starts to close dailies below there, I do think that Bitcoin does head uh, much further south um, before putting in something resembling a low. Now, I'll also talk about why I don't think Bitcoin is going to make any major new lows from this current region. If it's going to happen, I do think that Bitcoin gets one more test higher, actually. Um, but uh, but let me just uh, scroll back on over here. Um, okay, so yeah, let's go over the rest of the bearish case. And there are several good reasons to be bearish here. Um, actually, many, many good reasons. So first, and I wouldn't say foremost, but first and a pretty damn good region, uh, reason in this case is just simply this, the daily hidden bearish divergence on CME. And we also did see a bit of an extreme read on daily BBWP. And by the way, just for reference on CME, the daily BBWP extremes are, you know, in like the mid 80s, actually, you can see. Uh, historically speaking. Um, on top of that, we do see on the two-day on the two-day chart for regular spot price action, a bit of hidden bearish divergence right there. This is not the most obvious read though, in my opinion, because you really want to see like the next tick carry on downwards in these cases, but you know, fair enough. Um, uh, deserves some, deserves obviously recognition there as well. And then what was the other thing? Um, yeah, a couple, a couple other ones as well. Yeah, okay, we need to go over here. And on the daily stochastic momentum, we do see downside momentum, obviously, which will be remaining to the downside as long as Bitcoin's below 44 at 750 or so. Um, so even then, you know, the four hour range resolution is still pretty much the same as what we had like days ago, right? Where it was $45,000 on a four hour closure. Um, I wouldn't use an hourly in this case because the last time that, you know, that I saw or, or that we saw a closure there, you know, it was a bit of, 
just wasn't right. So I, I, I think, you know, once it, once is enough after that, I do not trust it again. Um, but so we see hidden bearish evidence and we also see daily stochastic momentum to the downside. That's a rather potent combination, um, typically speaking. And if we do have a range resolution below $40,000, then yeah, it would be looking for a return back down somewhere into the mid thirties. Um, you know, maybe as much as the macro cycle uh, low, or sorry, the macro range lows here, which would be about uh, 29,000 or yeah, 29 to $31,000. Here's the thing though, I actually do not think that Bitcoin is likely to make new lows, if even if it does choose the downside range here. I do think like maximum downside in the short term would be like 35-ish, let's call it. And the reason why I say that is because the global open interest right here is just, we didn't really reach any extremes on that last move to the upside. Um, so realistically, once once the open interest comes back down and bases somewhere around like 10, 10 billion, maybe a little bit below 10 billion, that's kind of where I'd be looking for another, you know, another major low to be put in in Bitcoin to try another rally from there. And what I'm actually going to do right now, and you can do this yourself as well, assuming that you have an account on the Crown Trading application, which is 100% free, by the way, so you can like do it whenever, but is uh, you can make a, a an alert for this, which I'm going to do right now and show you. So what I'm going to make it my my variable open interest. My sign is going to be under and 10 is going to be the number. Uh, in this case, I want to know when it's below 10. There we go. Um, so cool. Let me just scroll back on over here and make sure that this video is still rolling and it is. So that is good. And um, and yeah, so that would I mean, the bearish case is actually a lot more sim simplistic than the bullish case. <laughs> I mean, and usually that's going to be right as well, in my experience, which is kind of funny, um, even though I am even though I am saying myself that uh, I do think Bitcoin has a chance to try a bit of, uh, bit, you know, bit bit of upside right here. I still want to see it actually, you know, validate above that critical region. But, um, you know, contingent upon that. Yeah, I'd probably be looking for upside first before downside um, with short term target, you know, extensions back up to our prior range highs. And then obviously you want to see a closure above there. And then we can start to look towards, you know, 48 to $50,000 and then blah, 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 so on and so forth. Problem is, though, is that let's say hypothetical situation um, that the the meeting tomorrow with the Fed or the Ukraine Russia situation like actually gets serious. You know, something serious actually happens. I could very easily see something like this where you know you get a first quick initial nasty downside move. Boom, maybe try something like that. Could you know could be uh, if we really truly see like a real war. Um, breakout, you know, like a World War Three, or as Karosh said, World War Four, which actually is rather accurate when you consider the Cold War, which was rather serious. Um, you know, it, I guess it could be a a a a, a Rona is esque type time from uh, March 2020 over here, uh, where you see something like this, you know, just a initial flash crash and then a grind its way back upwards and onwards. Now, here's the thing: um, whilst Bitcoin probably does, or I think theoretically, or from the narrative perspective, Bitcoin probably does do okay uh, in that sort of a situation like long term just like from uh, the Rona the Rona dump over here um, I don't think that uh, it, it, I, I still think that you get kind of similar to this like the initial reaction is going to be a jolt and then the real response is going to be seen like in the in the two to three months to follow that kind of similar to what you saw back on over here um, I don't think like you just go straight to the upside obviously I know a lot of people are looking at this as a rejection of the 55 um, I mean well, I mean, it is thus far, like, <laughs> there's, there's not really much to say about that. Uh, but when we go over here to the other higher term time frame, uh, momentum oscillators, you know, they are still uh, generally pointed north, like the five day above 34,000 bucks, the two day, which is still above 38,000 bucks. Now that turning down would be a big problem, obviously. And well, if Bitcoin does close below $40,000, that probably is going to turn down uh, or, you know, you know, in the following days. Um, and in fact, I am starting to get some signals of major slowdown here on the two day time frame. So there is uh, certainly good reason to be cautious. There is there, the, the, the one thing that I feel extremely confident on is this is what we showed yesterday. Uh, which is the Bitcoin dominance chart, and uh, I'm bullish, bullish as fuck on this chart. Um, looking forward to move up, uh, probably into the shallow to mid 50% 50, 50 region. Per speaking, I think it's gonna move upwards and onwards from there over time. Other than that, though, I think that's going to do it for today's analysis. Again, if you just want to boil it down into like the most important things, look, as long as Bitcoin's below 43. Not really many bullish things going for it, obviously. Above 43,000 bucks, yes, that's where you can see the domino of effects leading onwards and forwards. Um, and then of course below, you know, below about 41,700-ish on a, even an hourly closure. Yeah, look for Bitcoin to wash out uh, below $41,000. And, um, you know, I guess the last hopium for the uh, short, medium-term bull laws is putting in a low somewhere around 
uh, mid 40s, let's say. But uh, but below there, no, I think I think it's done for a while, and you probably see a move deep into the 30s before anything else. So. You know, a little bit of hopium, a little bit of doomium today. I understand that these are the videos that people typically uh, don't like because people want, you know, like, this is going to happen for sure. But understand that there's nothing of that. And when I don't feel too confident about, um, you know, about a particular scenario, a particular situation, I'm not going to force it because I don't think that that's realistic trading and that's a really great way to get wrecked. So uh, at the end of the day, man, I do these videos for people who actually happen to give a fuck about trading and, and by an extent, technical analysis because that's the edge that I use mostly here. Um, you know, if that's not you, then you're probably not going to enjoy this video. So fair enough. You know, I'm just I, I can already visualize the comments of very angry people. But uh, but hey, fair enough. You know, that's that's why I do these videos anyway. It's just an expression of self. So a bit of a selfish endeavor, a bit of an altruistic endeavor. But ultimately, um, you know, I hope that this one does serve you well. And uh, and at the end of the day, if you're not sure, if you don't have a um, you know, if you don't have a plan for what's going on here, which is which is all that I'm doing in this particular scenario, uh, well. You don't have to do anything. That's a fine position as well. You can always wait for the easy trade. I don't think that we have the easy trade just yet. All right, cool. So signing off now. Take care, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.